so many people begged me to make a, a slingshot crossbow with a tutorial that everyone can make at home. It wasn't very easy because without welding equipment it's kind of hard. I had to solve a lot of problems. But this is it. It's made entirely out of wood and uh, standard off-the-shelf screws and of course rubber. Let me show you how to load it. First, um, you slide this thing back. So, slide it all the way down. Then we close the lock and see the trigger holds it in place. And then we put the ball in the pouch. And then we slip the ball in the pouch between the lock. And let's cock it. See, it's now locking in the front and it's ready for shooting. So these are two shoulder blades from a lamp. And let's see if it can penetrate the bone and maybe even enter the cat footing cat. This was certainly not a problem. <laughs> and it also crashed through the tin can. So as you saw, it shoots really well. Now I'm going, I'm going to show you how to make it. These are the tools we're going to need. An electrical saw, hand drill, files in a rasp, a drill, some basic tools. These are the parts we're going to need. Some long screws, like 60 millimeter long screws, in this case M5, 5 millimeter, and um, washers and nuts. Two of these little metal attachment things, some plywood, at least one thick board for the slingshot frame, and then a smaller one for other parts. I scavenged these for free from the local hardware store. A long piece of wood, in this case it's 15 millimeter piece of round wood, in this case it's 18 millimeter diameter, but it doesn't matter, it could be a little thicker or a little thinner. So first we transfer the shape of the slingshot frame to the thick multiplex board and saw it out. So now we sawed it out, it's time to round it and also to make the center hole. Okay, so that is the slingshot frame and the hole is in and notice that it's not straight but a little bit angled. So here you see it's angled but it slides easily up and down the wooden rod. So next we cut a little ramp into the end of the wooden part and we also drill a hole through it and attach a screw. And the purpose for this is See, our, our fork comes sliding up. Now imagine this would be under pressure from the stretching rubber. And here it locks and can't slide forwards. So this means that automatically when you are finished at your draw, the frame locks into the, uh, into the drawn out position. And then of course you can at any time slide it back by simply lifting it off and then angling it down. Next we cut out the uh, base plate for the trigger and lock system and um, this should be 18 and a half centimeters long and four centimeters wide. Next cut off four pieces three and a half centimeter each from the round wood and drill a five millimeter hole through it and on the other side widen it a little bit so that you can fit the five millimeter hex nut into it. Next cut out two pieces of multiplex can be a little thinner and um, make it six centimeters long and two centimeters wide. When you put them next to each other, they should be about as wide as the base plate. Next, drill two five millimeter holes into each side. Make sure that one of them on one side is a little bit off center because we want this to, use, to be used for the uh, round wooden parts and uh, we need a little gap in between. So they need to be a little bit more towards the outer edge. Next, drill matching holes into the base plate so that we got the base for our swinging arms. Next, we attach two of the rollers to the arms of the lock and you can see that there is enough space for the pouch to fit through. 
but not enough for the ball to slip through so this is going to be the lock and um, see that you have to kind of drill in here a bit so that later on the screw heads won't be in the way okay so next we mount the lock parts onto the base plate and um, what we have to do is we have to counter the nuts this means that you hold one of these nuts with the uh, pliers and then you tighten the other one so that they are tightened against each other this means that there is still some play in the screw to give the motion some movement some room but um, it still won't come apart so we now have formed the lock see that this is a little rounded now so that you can take these apart so they come apart to open and release the pouch later on next we saw out a t-shaped piece of plywood and then we attached the rollers to the ends of the top t-bar so you see what it should do later on is it should hold the lock together so it doesn't open even under force next we put two pieces of metal in a 90 degree angle against each other this will later on form the hinge and also we cut a slot into our little trigger system here so this is how it's going to look like now we need to drill a hole through the whole thing and then attach a screw to complete the hinge so we now attach a screw as an axis and also we attached another screw to be the trigger later on and it is now functional now we attach the barrel <laughs> so we first cut out an edgy piece and um, then we do matching holes in both the base plate and the barrel now that the barrel is attached we get a first feeling for the final weapon okay we attached some rubber and I also added a little grip for easier caulking it's not quite complete but it's ready for the first shot some fine tuning like a little bit of a spring for the trigger system you can also use a rubber band instead if you don't have a spring so now we attach the first part of the stock it's a little thin but don't worry we're going to wrap it later on with nice thick paracord or rubber band so now we have attached a very simple stock it's really simple so I did some final last changes wrap the handle in paracord put a little bit of rubber um, over the trigger and also I used rubber instead of the spring to show you that that works this everything is finished now it's really good and uh, aiming is quite easy because you just aim through the lock and um, between the frame I guess you could add some fancy uh, red dot or maybe even a telescopic sight but um, this really does the job Good luck in making your own one. Thanks and bye-bye.